Keep it growing. I appreciate that. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, as you know, my name is Corey Honey, and I'm the sheriff of Butte County. Uh, I'm going to take my mask off so that people who have a hard time hearing these events are uh, better able to hear me. Uh, so as uh, Chief Lagone said, the Orville Police Department received 911 call at around 7.30 last night uh, from a Greyhound bus that was parked at the AMPM market on Orodam Boulevard in Oroville. Uh, the <clears throat> reports from that bus was that there was a shooting taking place there. Uh, of course, as you heard, Orville Police Department responded. Uh, they asked for the assistance of the Butte County Sheriff's Office. We immediately sent uh, deputies to that location. As our deputies were responding to that location to assist, uh, 911 calls started to come into the Orville Police Department indicating that the suspect involved in that shooting was now in the Walmart uh, located about a half a mile south of the AMPM uh, where the uh, shooting originally occurred. Uh, our deputies, uh, as well as allied law enforcement agencies, immediately diverted uh, and went to Walmart. Um, upon entry into Walmart, uh, our deputies, uh, accompanied by a warden from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, encountered a subject. Uh, at that point, uh, he had no clothing on, uh, was acting in erratic behavior, uh, an erratic man manner. Uh, our deputies um, uh, recognized or identified him based on the description that they had received, uh, coupled with the behavior that he was exhibiting, uh, and immediately uh, were able to take him into custody uh, without uh, further incident or the use of any kind of force. So from that point on, uh, we began to work uh, the investigation in conjunction with the Orville Police Department and, and the, uh, the Butte County District Attorney's Office. Uh, we have a, a very good tradition here in Butte County of working these cases collaboratively. Uh, and last night was certainly no different. Uh, what we were ultimately able to uh, piece together at this point, um, uh, and let me preface these comments with, um, uh, this is still an active and ongoing investigation. Uh, there is still information that is being gathered and data being analyzed. Uh, there is information that we have today that we're not gonna release today because it's not appropriate at this point in time. So we're gonna give you an overview. Um, I recognize that you may have questions, but understand that uh, the integrity of the investigation is very important and we may not be able to answer questions. Additionally, uh, I may not be able to give you information about the identities of various people, again, because um, uh, we need to make uh, proper notifications and make sure that the individuals uh, who were involved in this have had a chance to talk to their loved ones. So with that, um, the information that we have uh, from the passengers on the bus uh, indicate that uh, the suspect, uh, who has been uh, identified as Asid Elijah Coleman, age 21, of Sacramento, boarded the bus uh, in Redding, California. Uh, he went uh, to the rear portion of the bus, uh, eventually took a seat. Uh, during the trip from Redding, uh, there were a couple of stops along the way. Uh, my understanding is uh, there was a stop in Red Bluff and a stop in Chico. Uh, as the bus came into Chico, um, the, uh, it appears as though uh, Mr. Coleman either made a telephone call or received a telephone call. Um, uh, that seemed to agitate him. At some point, uh, he began to have a conversation with other members of the bus. Uh, I think the conversations at this point can best be characterized as uh, him uh, acting paranoid and agitated. Uh, at one point, there was some discussion about uh, whether or not people were going to Los Angeles and uh, uh, Los Angeles being a dangerous place. Um, and that conversation then prompted uh, Mr. Coleman to show some of the people on the bus a firearm that he had in a, uh, a small bag or satchel that he, that he was carrying. Um, when they arrived in Oroville, um, as they parked uh, behind the AM PM, and people began to exit, uh, that is when uh, uh, Mr. Coleman began to fire his weapon. Um, as a result of that action, um, we have five people who sustained gunshot wounds or were injured. Uh, unfortunately, one of those individuals uh, uh, passed away and died at the scene. Uh, I cannot release that individual's name right now because we are still working to coordinate uh, notification of the next of kin. And I'm sure you can all appreciate the fact that we need to do that work before we make it public. It's the right thing to do. Um, 
in addition to the victim who passed away, who, who died on scene, uh, there, were, there was an 11-year-old girl. Uh, she uh, was ultimately transported to the hospital and treated, and the report that I have is that she is currently in stable condition. Uh, there was a 25-year-old female who was pregnant, uh, or is pregnant, I apologize. Uh, she uh, sustained uh, gunshot wounds. Uh, she was also transported to the hospital. Uh, she's been treated and currently listed in critical condition. Uh, there is a 38-year-old male. Uh, he uh, sustained a minor injury. Um, ultimately, he was treated. Uh, his condition is good, and he's expected to be released from the, from the hospital. Uh, there is a 32-year-old male uh, sustained uh, multiple gunshot wounds. Uh, he was transported to the hospital, uh, underwent surgery, and currently is listed in critical condition. Again, I'm not prepared to release the names of those individuals because uh, they need uh, to coordinate and we need to coordinate to make sure that their family members uh, are aware of what's going on. Uh, the information that we received, uh, uh, as I told you a moment ago, was that uh, the suspect fled the bus right after the shooting occurred. Uh, we've been able to uh, retrace the suspect's steps. It appears that he ran uh, south uh, across Orodam Boulevard through a uh, uh, commercial area with some stores. Uh, behind that, there is a charter school uh, with an area that is under construction. He went through the area uh, where the construction was taking place and at that point uh, dropped the firearm that uh, had been used in the shooting. Uh, later that evening, our deputies were able to recover that firearm. Um, then he continued southbound and ultimately ended up in the Walmart store, Walmart store. The preliminary information that we have with regard to his conduct within Walmart is that uh, he made entry into Walmart, uh, uh, walked into the store a, a ways, uh, ultimately uh, walked over towards where the cash registers were, um, at some point uh, became, uh, became involved in a verbal uh, altercation with a female. Uh, her uh, boyfriend was there and then that resulted in a physical altercation. That was broken up, at which point he moved to the front of the store, began to remove his clothing. And that is when, uh, at about that same time is when uh, our deputies uh, arrived on scene and were ultimately able to take him into custody. Mr. Ramsey, do you have information on his uh, prior history? Yes. Would you like to go into that? Okay, okay then I'll, let me, I'll finish up and I'll, okay. I'll finish up and leave. Yeah. Okay. Um, working in conjunction with the Oroville Police Department, uh, and uh, we called out the uh, California Department of Justice uh, Crime Lab. They worked on processing the crime scene as well as the bus. Uh, there are certain items of evidence located in there. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because, again, it's early on in the investigation, and uh, it's better that that uh, come out uh, at a time with, with, when it's appropriate for the prosecution. Um, ultimately, um, this is a horrific tragedy uh, that was uh, visited upon our community, another tragedy that we're having to, to deal with and endure in this community. Um, uh, my Certainly, my heart goes out to all of the people that were on the bus as well as uh, the victims uh, in this uh, case. Um, I am thankful that uh, we were able to take this individual into custody. I'm thankful that no one else got hurt and I'm really uh, thankful and appreciative of the efforts of all of the law enforcement agencies in Butte County who came together once again in a time of crisis to uh, uh, perform uh, what I would say uh, remarkably well. And with that I will turn it over to Mr. Ramsey who can talk about uh, the background of uh, Mr. Coleman, as well as how this case proceeds going forward.